Hi, I'm Miss Tessa with Valley Dance Ensemble, and I'm excited to dance a story with you today. Today we're dancing Raindrop Splash, story by Alvin Tresalt, with pictures by Leonard Weisgard. Drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. Went the rain all day. Today we'll be working with sequencing and remembering one piece to the next. So, we need to come up with three movements. One for drip, one for drop, and one for splash. We need to remember them because we'll be using them throughout the book today. So, how could you move for a drip? You can think of one movement for a drip. Mine will be a snap up high. Just hit a couple of times. Trip, trip. Yours might be a dropping movement or a turn. You can come up with whatever you'd like. It does need to be a quick movement so that you might be able to repeat it over and over several times. So, trip, drop is our next movement. Mine will be a clap to the side. Trip, drop. Drip, drop. Try yours together. Drip, drop. Drip, drop. Good. Now let's add our splash. I will go drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. So you should have three movements and be able to stream them together. Drip, drop, splash. Keep practicing. Try them a few times so that you can remember them. Dripped from the shiny leaves, dropped from a rabbit's nose, splashed from a brown bear's tail. Fell from a daisy's face, trickled down the tree trunks, and splunked on a green frog's back. Can you hear the movement words there? Fell, trickled, and splunked. So we're going to add our first three movements, drip, drop, and splash, and then we are going to add on fell, trickled, splunked. Let's try it. You can come up with any sort of falling movement for the word fell. So it could just be an arm. It could be a head or a back. Um, it could be your whole body. You could fall. Try to make it interesting so that it's not just a regular fall, but how could you move your body in a new way or use your arm to change your shape. So let's try practicing a couple of ways to fall. So we might fall back, we might roll, we might not even start up very high in the first place. So we might start here and fall. Play around with a few different things until you have something that you like. So we have fall, we have trickled. Hmm, what, is it, what do you think of when you think of the word trickle? It says that the water trickled down the tree trunks. So we could do some sort of trickling. You could use your fingers or knee to make a movement that resembles trickling. So, Mine might be fell and trickled. Try it again in a row. Fell and trickled. Then we have splunked on a green frog's back. Hmm, splunking brings a lot of movement ideas. We could do something that is kind of like a fall with a a bigger shape at the end. I think of water falling and then spreading out when I think of the word splunk. Hmm. So we can do something that starts a little bit more compact and then spreads. We could um, make it more of a locomotor where we splunk, splunk. Try and think of three things that you like. So we have our first combination, trip, drop, splash. 
trip, tap, splash. And then we move into fell, trickled, splunked. It can be any combination of these. You really want to remember those first three, drip, drop, splash. Drip, splash, fell, trickle, splunk. <laughs> Keep trying it over. Drip, drop, splash, fell, trickle, splunked. Let's see what happens next. There were so many raindrops, they made a puddle. The puddle grew larger and larger and larger until it became a pond. Water lilies floated on it, little fish swam in it, and tiny snails sat beside it. Hmm, there are a lot of movement words here. The puddle grew larger and larger and larger until it became a pond. Water lilies floated on it and swam in it and sat beside it. Okay, so the first word we're going to play with in this page is growing. So we start out as just a little puddle. So make a small shape. But then it says the puddle grew larger and larger and larger. Experiment with a few different shapes, starting small and growing bigger. It doesn't have to start on the floor either. You can have small shapes in the middle area. Small, growing, growing, growing. You can even start up high and grow, grow, grow. Try a few different ways of growing from your puddle to your pond. Now we have water lilies that floated on it. When I think of floating, I think of a nice, gentle, and smooth movement, like a jellyfish through the water. Nice and smooth, no sharp points, just nice and light. Or, like it said, lily pads floating on top of the water. So we could have something to represent the surface floating. But it's a light movement. Try moving through your space in a light floating way. Then it says the fish swam through it. Mm, how could you move like you're swimming through the space? Now when we think of swimming, oftentimes we think of this type of motion. But how could we change it just a little bit so that we don't look like we're actually swimming, but that we're just reminded of it? Could we move with our arms in a new way? We could take this motion, this windmill type motion, and change it into our legs. Or even our head. Also, when we're thinking about the fish swimming through the water, we can think of a movement moving through our space. So instead of just staying in one spot, we can try something moving and cutting through our dancing space, no matter where we're dancing. And then we have the snail who sat beside it. Let's come up with a couple of shapes for stillness. We can just sit, right? But how could we make that more interesting? Maybe we could tuck our legs a little bit or weave our arms. We could change the direction of our head and focus to make a more interesting shape as we sit beside our puddle. Let's try another shape.
Try to move in a way that you've never moved before. Something that can be interesting and new. Our pond is growing. Still, it rained. Drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. You can practice your combination if you'd like. Drip, drop, splash. The little pond grew larger and larger and spilled right over into a brook. We're going to be doing our combination three times. Drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. And then our pond will grow larger and larger until it spills right over the edge. So, let's come up with a combination. Drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. Now we grow, 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 grow until we can't anymore and we spill over the edge. Let's try it again. Drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. And we grow, growing, growing until we can't get any bigger and we spill over the edge. Remember that your movement doesn't have to look like mine. This is your dance and you can dance it any way you'd like. Now our pond has turned into a brook. Tumbling and splashing and running down the mountain. Scared a chipmunk, splashed some violets, passed a mother deer showing her baby how to drink. Jumped over big stones, fell into deep pools, and rested on a bed of soft green moss. Then tumbled into a lake. Oh, there is so much movement on this page. We're gonna start with tumbling and splashing and running. Then we'll move into jumping, falling, resting, and end again with tumbling. Let's start with some tumbling movements. How might we show our body tumbling? We might want to start up high and end down low with a roll. You can come up with lots of different ways to tumble. You might fall onto the floor. Think of a movement that you really like to do that's really fun and feels good in your body for tumbling. That's how we'll start and that's how we'll end. So remember what it is. We're going to start with tumbling. My tumbling movement, I think, is going to be a roll to the floor. After we tumble, we're going to splash. Mm. What do you think of when you think of splashing? I think of water flying out. So I might want to use my arms or legs to fly out to make a big splashing shape. So we have tumbling and splashing and running. So we're going to start with our tumble, our splash, and we're going to run. Let's try it again. Ready? Tumble, splash, and run. That's the first section of this page's dance. Tumbling, splashing, running down the mountain. Jumped over big stones, fell into deep pools, and rested on soft green mat moss. So we have Tumbling, splashing, running. We're pretty good at that now. Now let's add a jump. My dance might look like this. Tumble, splash, run, and jump. It can be any sort of jump, any shape, and it doesn't have to look the same every time. Remember, we're just wanting the tumble to be the same, but the other parts in the middle can vary each time. So we have Tumbling, splashing, running, jump. After we jump, we're going to fall. So you might want to make it a jump that can easily go down to the ground without hurting yourself. So we just ran, we jumped, 
and we fall. Whatever that looks like for you, and whatever feels like it's a lot of fun. After we fall, we get to rest. But remember, we don't want just any old resting shape. We want it to be interesting to look at because we might be there for a long time. So we tumble, we splash, we run, we jump, we fall, we rest. My resting shape, I think, will be here. We rest, and you know the great part is, sometimes there's such beauty in the stillness that we can rest for a while. So we might take our resting shape and count to four or eight or whatever you feel like feels good. And then we'll start again with our tumble. So we rest, rest, rest. And then we might add in our tumble to end it again. So go ahead and try it. I'm going to read it to you while you dance it. Tumbling and splashing and running down the mountain scared a chipmunk, splashed some violets past a mother deer showing her baby how to drink, jumped over big stones, fell into deep pools, and rested on a bed of soft green moss, then tumbled into a lake. Very good, guys. Now it was a big lake with big fish and tall pickerel weeds. Dragonflies skimmed over the water, turtles floated quietly, and a red-winged blackbird built his nest in the rushes. Can you hear the movement words here? We have skimmed, floated, and built. I think that we'll take the movement of the red-winged blackbird and turn it into a flying movement, because as he's building, he's carrying little pieces to his nest where he's building. And so he does a lot of flying back and forth. So we're going to take a skimmed movement, a floating movement, and a flying movement. Let's try it. To skim means to lightly trace over. Um, and so we want to think of a light movement. Um, it could be fast. Did you see where my arms and foot skimmed across? It could be slow. Um, but it can be whatever you'd like. It could just be a skim across the top of the water as if you were dragging your fingers across the top of a pool. After skimming, we float. So we might skim and float. Remember, floating is a light, smooth movement. Whatever that looks like for you. We skim and we float. And then we're going to fly like the blackbird, the red-winged blackbird. Fly. Now that can look like a lot of things. Try to come up with a new way to fly like a red-winged blackbird. We might start with the flapping of our wings, but how could we change it? There are a lot of different ways. Go ahead and try. Skimmed, floated, and fly. Still it rained. Drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. The lake grew larger and larger. It flooded a farmer's meadow and the cows stood in the mud. This one's pretty simple. We know most of the movement already. Do you remember your combination? Drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. And then we grow, 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 grow until we can't anymore. And we spill over. Try it again. Drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. Drip, drop, splash. Then we grow, 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 and spill over. Very good. That's kind of fun to spill over, isn't it? That's my favorite part.
It covered a road, and the cars couldn't pass, and the children had to go to school in a boat. Wouldn't that be fun? Then it overflowed into a river with houses and towns along the shore. It ran under bridges and over waterfalls. Men fished from the rocks and two teams had a boat race. Hmm, it overflowed and it ran under and over. Hmm, how could we show that with our bodies in an open space when we have nothing to go under or over? Could we still show that? Let's try. So we have our overflowing and then we want to move under and over. How can we use our bodies to show that? Hmm. I'm going to overflow and then I'm going to go under and over. Let's try something new. Overflow, then I'm going to go under and over. Let's try one more thing. Hmm, let's see, maybe we start down low and we overflow and then we go under and over. Lots of different ways to show that. Keep trying it, try it one more time. Overflowed, then under and over. Good job, I'm sure you're being very creative. Past factories and warehouses, the river came to great cities with docks. There were ships and barges and scows and tankers and a boat full of people on a holiday. Look at all the different kinds of boats. It all started with that drip drop splash, didn't it? Little boys jumped into the water. Subway trains and cars ran under it. Ferry boats puffed back and forth on top and seagulls flew over it looking for fish to eat. Little boys jumped into the water. Subway trains and cars ran under it. Ferry boats puffed back and forth on top. The seagulls flew over it looking for fish to eat. Did you see me point out the movement words on this page? They ran under it. The ferry boats puffed back and forth on top. And seagulls flew over it looking for fish to eat. Can you tell where we're going to start our movement on this page? Ran under it. Hmm. How can you run under something? First, you want to be careful not to hit your head, right? But what if we started running and we ran ducking under? Or maybe we just make the running movement in slow motion. And then we can go under as we come back up. You play around with it and find something you like. Ran under, the ferry boats puffed back and forth on top. So when we think of a back and forth motion, we're gonna do something that retraces its steps, right? So we might move back and forth like this. It might be an arm that goes back and forth, back and forth. Something that repeats its pattern or its steps. So, you're going to choose something that's running under, something that moves back and forth, back and forth, at least two times. And then, you're going to fly over it. So, when we think of that, we think of a high movement, using the high space. We also think of maybe soaring or flapping. So, think of something up high. So we have ran under it in the low space, moving back and forth, retracing its steps at least two times, and then flying over it. Try it a couple of times. Practice it on your own. You can even pause the video at any time if you'd like more time on something. Then it passed a fort and a lighthouse and a bell buoy and the river flowed into the sea. So our little drop has become a river and it's flowing into the sea. How might we move with the word flowing? To me, I think of a steady movement, something that doesn't start or stop, but just keeps going. That's what I think of when I think of a river. 
moving back and forth through the land. What else can we do for flowing? It means constant. It stays moving. It doesn't stop. Tall waves rolled up to meet it. There was an ocean liner with lots of little tugboats guiding it. The sun came out and at last the rain stopped. So we have tall waves rolling up to meet it and then an ocean liner with lots of tugboats guiding it and then the rain stopped. So for our dance today we're going to make the tall ro waves rolling and then we're going to stop. Stopping sometimes seems like the end. Sometimes it's just the middle of a dance. It's really up to you. But always make sure that your shape that you stop in is interesting to look at and interesting to dance. So we have tall waves. So we want to use our high space. I think of waves rolling over and crashing down. What else could you do to make tall waves rolling? And then when you're ready, find somewhere to stop. An interesting shape. Try a few different things until you find something that you like. So, today your assignment, after our book is over, is to start with your Rain, drop, splash, drip, drop, splash, repeated three times. And then you can choose any of the other movement words that we worked on, floating, um, rolling, tumbling, resting, to come up with your own combination and try to practice it several times so you remember the order. Then you'll again end in drip, drop, splash, drip, drop, splash, then stop and come up with a very interesting shape to end in. I hope you enjoyed this book with me today. I had fun dancing with you. See you later.